What is up guys, my name is Ignas, welcome back to the channel. It's been just over a year when I started investing on Revolut and tracking progress with this Google spreadsheet. It really helps in checking how much I paid for each position, how heavy the name is in the portfolio and how much I have invested in each sector of the market. For any dividend lovers out there, it also has a tracker to check on the portfolio's dividend yield and how much money it brings on an annual basis. But I think the best part about this tracker is that it is completely free to use. You you just need to make a copy of it and then you can make changes with your positions in it. Unfortunately for anyone new this could be a bit overwhelming. So with that in mind today I will make a step by step tutorial on how you can set up this tracker for your own stock portfolio. All I ask in return is a thumbs up under this video. I will try to explain everything thoroughly so stay patient and let's begin. To show how to set up your own positions in the tracker I will be using my recently started eToro portfolio. There are 6 positions and all of them will be added in there. The first step we need to do is to make a copy of the file. So we go to file and make a copy. We can rename it however we like and then click OK. So now that we have a copy we can start editing. I'm renaming it as Dandy Finance eToro Stock Portfolio. The first position that I made on eToro was July 8th of 2021 and the portfolio there is in US dollars. Now here we are tracking all the positions that I have on Revolut but I want to change this up for what I have on eToro. So this needs to be deleted. To make it easier I would recommend to leave the first First position for each sector. I think editing the first line and copying will be easier than inserting everything from scratch. So let's delete all the position rows except the first one for each sector. To do that we click on the unnecessary rows, right click it and then delete rows. And we do the same for each sector. So now we are left with 11 rows for 11 market sectors. We will be adding each name into the appropriate line and first one is take to interactive ticker symbol TTWO. To check which market sector that that is I'm using Yahoo Finance. So opening the page with a stock and just scrolling down until I get the company profile tab. So Yahoo Finance suggests that this name is in the communication services sector. We can go back into our tracker and delete information from the first four cells. So the position was started on July 15th of 2021. The company's name is Take True Interactive and the ticker symbol is TTWO. Now there is also a line for the logo which doesn't provide very much value other than then quickly recognizing which name I'm looking into. To add the log of the company we need to find an image on the web first. So when I have the image saved up I can go to insert, image and insert an image in the cell. Then I just need to select the file and open it up. So now we have the logo of the company in that specific cell. Next step is the number of shares that we own. So for take two we currently have 1.23 of a share. We add that information in the cell. Next two columns are the buying price and the current market price. But these are updated automatically, so no changes here. Then we come to the cost basis. On eToro we can find that we have invested $200 in the name, so we need to get $200 in the cost basis cell. The market value is the current price of the position, which is also calculated automatically. Then we have a gain loss column and the position growth column. No changes for these, a small graph for the 30 day price movements and the percentage how much this name adds up into the portfolio. But we don't need to focus on these yet, as not all of the positions are yet added in. Scrolling just a bit to the right gives the part where the dividends are calculated. So we again need to add the ticker symbol and on which stock exchange it is traded. Yahoo Finance helps on that again. So here we can find that Take True Interactive is traded on the Nasdaq. This means that we need to write that down in the cell and we'll get the information on the dividends for the position. Unfortunately TTWO is not paying dividends right now so we are getting zero dollars and cents for it. Now let's take another position and that will be Alibaba ticker symbol BABA. Let's find it in Yahoo Finance, scroll down and the company is in the consumer cyclical or the consumer discretionary sector. So we'll use line number 9 for it. The position was started on July 8th. We copy the company's name in the respective cell and then add a ticker symbol for it. As with take two, if we want a logo, we need to save one from the web, then click on that cell, press insert, image and insert image in the cell. Then we browse for the picture 
and open it up. Now we need to check how many shares we got. So in Baba's case we have 1.01. Number of shares he inserted. Then cost basis is at exactly $200. So 200 in cost basis column. And the rest of the columns are updated automatically. Now scroll to the right a bit. So on which stock exchange Alibaba is traded? Yahoo Finance suggests that that is Nisa. So the NA in the dividend per share cell suggests that no dividends are paid for this name. To avoid getting errors we need to put a zero in the dividend column. In that case we get another zero for the yield on cost and the zero in the dividend amount paid for the position. But this will help us calculate how much in dividends are we actually paid. Another name in the portfolio is skills ticker symbol SKLZ. So back to Yahoo Finance. And scrolling lower we can find that skills in the communication services sector. Right now we only have one line for each sector, so we need to add one more. We click on the line, right click it and then insert one row below. Now we click on the previous line again, right click it and copy and then click on the line below, right click it and paste. So we copy the line to use it for the next position. Let's delete the information from the first four columns. So the position was started on July 14th, adding the name of the company and the ticker symbol. Getting a logo from the web. So insert image and insert image in a cell. Browsing for that saved logo and opening it up. Now let's check how many shares we have for this position. So for skills we are at 14.86 and for this position we have invested $108. So in the shares column we insert 14.86 and for the cost basis we have $180. Now we scroll to the right and we need information on the exchange. So Yahoo Finance shows that the stock is traded on Nisa. That is what we add in. Unfortunately there are again no dividends. So a zero is added to avoid any errors. Next name in the list is MasterCard ticker symbol MA. So going to Yahoo Finance scrolling down and MasterCard is in the financial services sector. Luckily for us there is already a MasterCard in the line for financials. So we don't need to delete everything, just change on the position starting date. Which for us is August 12th of 2021. So now how many shares we got for MasterCard that is currently at 0.28. So we add that information in the column. And then for the cost basis we currently invested $100 in the position. So $100 in. Scrolling to the right MasterCard is already inserted for the dividends calculation. So they pay $1.76 per share annually on a dividend yield of 0.49%. Our yield on cost is currently the same at 0.49 and with our share position we are currently paid 49 cents every year. Next position is SoFi Technologies ticker symbol SOFI. Going to Yahoo Finance scrolling down and we find that SoFi is also in the financial services sector. So we press on the financials line, right click it and insert one row below. Then we click on the first line again, copy the whole line and paste it in the new one we added. Delete the first four columns. So the position was started on August 13th. We add in the name and the ticker symbol. Finding a logo on the web. Going to insert image and image in a cell. Getting the saved logo and opening it up. Now on eToro we can find that we currently have 6.69 of a share. So inserting it in the appropriate column and then for the cost basis that is at exactly $100. So inserting 100 in the cost basis column. Now for the dividend information. So Yahoo Finance suggests that SoFi is traded on the Nasdaq. Adding the information in and no dividends are paid here. So inserting 0 for the dividend per share column. And the last position is Barry Gold ticker symbol GOLD. We find the position in Yahoo Finance. Scroll down and the name is in the basic material sector. Fortunately for us that is already aligned on our tracker. So we only need to update the date which was August 10th of 2021. Then we need to check how many shares we got. So for Barrick we now have 4.93 of a share. Insert that in the tracker and for the cost basis we are at $100. So 100 in the cost basis column. GLD is traded on ESA. It currently pays 36 cents per share. And that is a dividend yield of 1.78%. Unfortunately the stock is down just a bit. So our yield on cost is now 1.77%. And for $100 that we invested. We now get $1.70 every year. So now that all the positions from eToro are added. We need to remove the necessary ones. But the separate sector name stays. So we currently got nothing in consumer 
more staples, no positions in energy, nothing in healthcare, deleting industrials, information technology, no positions in real estate, and deleting utilities. Since we started skills on the 14th and take to interactive on the 15th, let's change the lines in between. So all six positions from eToro are now added. These are skills, take to interactive, Alibaba, Mastercard, SoFi Technologies, and Barry Gold. Now we also need to add our cash position in the portfolio. So in eToro we currently have $100 reserved for buying and then $197.80 cent available to invest. So outside positions we have $297.89 in cash. So now that we have all the positions in, on the dividend side we can find that out of this portfolio we would be getting $2.27 each year with a dividend yield of 0.2%. But keep in mind that the majority of these aren't dividend payers, so your case could be very much different. Now let's scroll just a bit to the right, where we find a few charts with no data in, but let's skip it for now and scroll Scroll down. Here are our contributions part. Delete the whole list and insert what is actually added. So for eToro I've made two deposits. One was on July 8th for $589.24 and second one was on August 6th for $588.65. All in all we have currently deposited $1177.89. Now let's scroll to the left and we have the small summary table in the middle. So the portfolio is now valued at $1124.86 and since we know that our deposit sum is $1177.89 this means that we are currently at a loss of $53.03 and that is a decrease of our investments for 4.5%. On the left we have a pie chart on how the portfolio is diversified. So with cash we now have 7 positions and skills is now at 12.2%, take to interactive at 17.5, Alibaba at 16. 9, Mastercard at exactly 9%, SoFi at 8.9, Barry Gold is also at 8.9 and we have cash at 26.5% of the portfolio. Scrolling just a bit lower there is a chart for sector allocations, so we need to also update on that. In communication services sector we have two names, but only one is calculated right now, so we need to update. There is one name for consumer discretionary, no positions for staples and energy. Then we have two positions for financials, so an update here. And then we also have one in materials, which is correct right now. And then a cash position, which is also correct. So we now have 29.8% allocated for communication services, then 16.9% for consumer discretionary, 17.9% in financials, 8.9% in materials, and 26.5% of the portfolio in cash. We are also able to add our targets for each sector. So since currently our target for communication services sector is 20% and the actual weighting in the portfolio is 29.75, we get a yellow color out in the table. If our target would be 30% or plus minus 1% of the weighting, then we would get the color in green. And if we are below our target, let's say with a current of 40%, then it would give out a red color, meaning that we still need to increase on this sector. Since this is a trading portfolio, I would give much attention in sector allocations, but if you are tracking your investing portfolio, I think this will help you in finding which sectors you are still lacking in or which ones are already overweight for the portfolio. Just make sure that by putting targets in, they do add up to 100% at the end. Now if we scroll back up and then to the right, we come back upon these few pie charts, but most of them have no data in them. This is because we only have 6 positions and they are from 4 different market sectors. The charts visually represent how much diversification we have for each separate sector. So for example for materials we have 100% invested in GOLD, while for communication services there is 58% in TTWO and 41% in SKLZ. When more positions are added in various sectors, this will be updated automatically and then that will help in tracking. Scrolling lower we have two more graphs, one is for dividends and the other one is for the portfolio. In first one I had a goal of $120 in dividends every year, but the numbers may be updated however you like, just double click on it and then you open up this extra section on the right and on the vertical axis part you can change the data here, so my goal could be changed to any value that I want. And it's the same 
time for the portfolio progress. So my goal for the Revolut portfolio is over $18,000 in 5 years. But you can change that up for your personal goals. At this part we have a table where I track the portfolio progress. Since we only started in 2021, we can delete the info from the second line and then update the first one. Let's add the number of how much we added into the portfolio and then the current portfolio value. Since I want to compare myself to the S&P, I can also add the result there. But the year is not finished yet so we will look into the year to date. So on the year to date S&P is now up for 20.74% which I will add into our table. And the difference here shows that we are currently way behind the progress of the S&P. The chart below will show our annual progress where the blue part of the bar is our deposits and the green part will show our results which are unfortunately right now with the minus sign. And lastly we have this financial freedom gauge which I have set up to a maximum of 300,000 US dollars. This is our end game sum that we need to reach to get financially free. But with the current $1100 here we are still way away from that goal. If we double click it we can find these gauge numbers on the right and the numbers are customizable so you can change these here for your goals as well. I think that that was pretty much it. You need to update your existing positions if more shares are bought or sold and then change on the cost basis. Other than that the graphs and sums should manage to update automatically. And in my opinion this is a really good tracker especially to check in weightings on separate positions of the portfolio and exposure to different sectors of the market. I think that really helps in deciding which parts need to be more focused on and which of these can be left alone for a while. So that was it on making your own stock portfolio tracker in Google Sheets. If you got value or new ideas then make sure to push the thumb up it helps the channel a lot. What do you think? Would you be using such portfolio tracker for yourself? Share your opinion in a comment below. If you are interested in extra content then consider the options on Patreon. By becoming a patron you will get access to Discord where I share my stock trading watch list and notify exactly when I buy and sell any names. This could be a great option to track my moves closely. This week we already did an update on our moves in eToro portfolio and we also have a stock comparison between a few beverage brewing names with Molson Coors, Boston Beers and CCU. If you are interested in any of these then click on a video currently on the screen. And that was it from my side, thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all in the next one.